Across the country, First Nations people took to the streets today, angry over what they say has been a miscarriage of justice for Yamachi woman Miss Clark. We're still out on these streets and we're still fighting the same battle that our people stood in front of us for generations. The protests follow last Friday's jury verdict to acquit a WA police officer charged with Miss Clark's murder. Understand my voice is shaking. My legs are shaking. I have tears running down my face right now. I've had this feeling watching this trial that she hasn't been, you know, treated as a, um, a woman, a human. Ms Clark, a mother of one, was shot dead two years ago in Geraldton, 400 kilometres north of Perth. Her family want her to be remembered as a loving mum, an auntie and daughter. A very loving and kind person. She was very loving and caring with all, all the kids and that. Ms Clark had had dozens of interactions with the criminal justice system in her short life and her mental health had deteriorated. The 29-year-old had battled with a drug addiction since she was a teenager. In late August 2019, Ms Clark was released from the Bandiup Women's Prison. On September 7, the 29-year-old called police in serious distress and was admitted to the Sir Charles Gardner Hospital in Perth. The jury was told there was no sign Ms Clark was suffering psychosis and she was discharged on Friday, September 13. That weekend, she left Perth for Geraldton to stay with relatives. Four days later, she was experiencing another mental health episode on the streets of Geraldton. Police went searching for Ms Clark on the evening of September 17. Several officers arrived on a residential street in Geraldton after a report she'd left a relative's house with a bread knife and a pink pair of scissors. Four police cars arrived on the scene. The court heard that in 16 seconds, one of the officers ran towards Ms Clark and shot her in the abdomen. Her family were notified that she'd died at the Geraldton Hospital an hour later. It was the doctor that had told me on the phone. I'm sorry, your sister is deceased. And I just shouted and like, with not anger, it was more scared and afraid of how, how it happened, I guess. A murder trial in the Supreme Court of Western Australia this month examined whether the officer who shot Ms Clark had exercised an unnecessary use of force. It was the first time a police officer had been charged with murder in the line of duty in almost a hundred years in Western Australia. It's not for me to be judge and jury. Uh, we have to put the evidence before the court. Uh, and as we all know, uh, a jury in the appointed court heard the evidence uh, and they acquitted uh, that officer of this charge. The police commissioner in Western Australia says his force is committed to improving the relationship with Aboriginal people. I've expressed my sorrow uh, and regret uh, and I'm sorry that JC lost her life in this way. I've said that to the family. Uh, no one wants this situation uh, and this sort of consequence. In Geraldton, on the day of her death, Ms Clark had told relatives she wanted to go and see her son and she thought she might die. Mental health, as well as a lot of the systems, let her, failed her, you know, at the time. She didn't know who to turn to anymore. More than a year before her death, a judge had urged prison authorities to have Ms Clark assessed for fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, saying it would be a disaster for her if she was released without supervision. To support Ms JC, you needed to go to her on a regular and scheduled basis and on a needs basis. It's not likely that an individual with lack of agency living below the poverty line, below the bread line, in crushing poverty, is going to come to you. Anne Jones took Ms Clark into her care as a baby. Me and my partner fostered her at five months old. She was the second daughter that we never had. In the days before Ms Clark was shot, Anne Jones says her daughter was also looking for permanent housing. 
She was asking to get herself accommodation. She was going up, like went to one of the agencies there and they were sort of long-winded about getting help for her to get a house. Noongar human rights lawyer Dr Hannah McGlade believes too many Aboriginal women leave correctional facilities and hospitals in WA without culturally appropriate support. JC was at risk to herself. If she had had stable housing and mental health appropriate care, uh, she might be alive today. In a statement, the WA Department of Justice told 7.30 that it opened its first dedicated prison mental health unit at Bandiup Women's Prison in July this year. Bernadette Clark wore the Aboriginal flag draped around her each day she attended court in memory of her younger sister. She's a loving, kind-hearted girl, always was smiling, but always rung me while she was doing her prison times, always sent my babies cards, Christmas cards. Ms Clark's relatives don't feel they've seen justice for their loved one. We want big changes, we want things to change after this. We don't want to be afraid of the police. Ms Clark left behind her nine-year-old son, who will now grow up without his mum. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.